Hey everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. I've recently opened up about having Alice in Wonderland syndrome, and since then, you guys have been asking me tons of questions about my condition. So, after some consideration, I've decided to do a Q&A on Instagram, and here I am going to be answering your questions. So let's get started. For those of you who don't know what Alice in Wonderland syndrome is, it's a rare neurological disorder characterized by distortion of perception. Why is it called Alice in Wonderland Syndrome, right? Like, that's quite a funny name. Is it related to the book, Alice in Wonderland? Dr. John Todd is the psychiatrist who discovered and named this disorder. He named it after Alice in Lewis Carroll's book, Through the Looking Glass, because the misperceptions that the individuals experience resemble to what happened to Alice in Wonderland in that book, hence its name. When did you realize that you had Alice in Wonderland syndrome? There was something unusual happening to me. I was in grade one at the time, and I remember my teacher, she was getting bigger in my eyes. And I told her that, and I believe she took it the wrong way, and ended up giving me a time out. Instances like this kept happening to me over time. And I also remember getting abnormal headaches and migraines as a child. I wondered if it was normal for someone my age to have this many migraines. And the doctor told me that the mean age of Alice in Wonderland syndrome onset was eight and a half years old. What are the symptoms of Alice in Wonderland syndrome? I filmed myself walking around school to show you what I would experience. As you can see, the garbage got bigger. This is one type of distortion that affects me and my behavior throughout the day. To be quite frank, it impedes my social interactions with numerous individuals. Many of the symptoms that we experience include the inability or strongly diminished ability to perceive color. The next one is lines and contours appearing to be wavy. And the most common of these symptoms is distortion of seeing things smaller or larger than they normally are. What all these symptoms have in common is that they constitute distortions of sensory perception rather than hallucinations or illusions. Hallucinations are sensations that appear to be real but are created within the mind, while illusions have a source in the outside world that is oftentimes misperceived or misinterpreted by the brain. Distortions are based on sensory impressions, but include specific changes in highly specific aspects of the sensory input picture. So the video I just showcased is an example of a sensory distortion. Now, I am fortunate in a sense that I do not experience these symptoms every day because the duration of symptoms tend to vary from some individuals experiencing symptoms that perceived for like a few minutes, but others have symptoms that persist for days. How many reported cases are there since it's considered so rare, right? Unfortunately, the prevalence of Alice in Wonderland syndrome is unknown. So personally, I do not know how many individuals in the world are affected by this disorder. One of the reasons is that there are not many studies that are conducted on a large scale for this, and the diagnostic criteria lacks consensus amongst the medical community. Major classifications such as the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders does not list AIWS as a diagnostic criteria, whereas the International Classification of Diseases and the American Psychiatric Association does pay attention to it. All right, moving on to the next question. How is Alice in Wonderland Syndrome diagnosed? When I was eight, I was officially diagnosed with the condition. The differential diagnosis of Alice in Wonderland syndrome and its individual symptoms is complex. It can be easily misdiagnosed. Not only do the symptoms need to be differentiated from other positive disorders of perception, such as like I mentioned hallucinations and delusions, but a variety of conditions such as brain lesions and various fevers need to be established and ruled out. Out of 166 patients, 22.9% of these individuals suffered from infectious diseases before being diagnosed with AIWS, and 21.7% of those individuals were less than 18 years of age. So because of this finding, my doctor suggested I get an MRI to see if there were infectious diseases that could be responsible for the symptoms I presented with. And through this MRI, they then found I had a brain inflammation. Is AIWS related in any way to schizophrenia? My family was initially confused by this question as well. 
Even though schizophrenia and other psychiatric disorders have been reported in AIWS etiology and literature, a study done by Blom had concluded that AIWS symptoms have both different diagnostic and therapeutic consequences than those in schizophrenia spectrum disorders and other hallucinatory syndromes. Furthermore, AIWS is characterized by perceptual disorders rather than hallucinations and illusions, as I mentioned earlier. Therefore, this needs to be distinguished from schizophrenia spectrum and other psychotic disorders. So this may lead you guys to wonder, are there any treatments for AIWS? And this is a great question, but there currently is no specific treatment plan. Doctors will give you treatments based on your symptoms. My doctor told my family that in one study, 54 patients were given specific pharmacologic treatments to alleviate their underlying conditions. There were cases in which patients were recommended to undergo brain stimulation therapy. One patient received electroconvulsive treatment. But this is just a brief stimulation of the brain, electrically. Another patient received repetitive transcranial magnetic stimulation. This treatment is another form of brain stimulation therapy, but with a magnet this time, instead of electrically. Most of my treatments treated my severe migraines that I said I had from quite a young age. I had to follow a migraine diet regimen for my relief. So there you have it guys, this is my AIWS experience. I hope I answered all the questions you may have had, and remember, if you are experiencing any symptoms, please contact your physician for more information. I hope you enjoyed the video and see you soon. This video was done in collaboration with Demystifying Medicine. Please subscribe to both accounts for more content.